Hello students, here I am discussing reactions of naphthalene. So you know that the benzene has two resonant structures and all carbon-carbon bonds are of equal length. But in naphthalene, it has a three resonant structures, it has a two types of carbon-carbon bonds. That means all carbon-carbon bonds are not equal. Okay. Uh, I did one video on uh, resonant structures of the fused aromatic compounds uh, that uh, link I will share in a uh, description you can see that now of course here yeah, these three are the uh, resonant structures of the naphthalene so here yeah, in this case uh, how this one has a uh, different type of uh, bonds actually so in this case here double bond here double bond here single bond next year this one single bond here single bond double bond that means here this bond this one two bond has a two times uh, double bond character and one single bond character but here in this case uh, this one single bond this is a single bond this is a double bond so it has a two different type of bonds of course here this uh, two three bond is longer than the one two carbon carbon bond because this bond has a uh, two times double bond character that's why here this 2,3 carbon carbon 2,3 bond is a longer bond than this uh, carbon 1,2 bond <coughs> okay so next year one and no aromatic uh, reactions of the naphthalene actually here uh, this one and two are different carbon atoms so here in this case uh, uh, for the attacking of the alkylophiles there are the two possible sites that is the first carbon and second carbon if alkylophile attacks on the first carbon it is a sigma complex and here it is a sigma complex when alkylophile attacks at the second carbon. So now here which position is the most preferable? The first carbon is the most preferable for the attacking of the alkylophile because it is expanded on the base of the sigma complex. Now here the sigma complex is stabilized by the resonance. So here this is the re next resonant structure. So this pi bond here, alkylophile, hydrogen, this is a positive charge. Now here if you write the resonant structures for this one. This is a resonant structure here in this case positive charge pi bond here pi bond. So here of course here furtherly we have a some resonant structures for this one also we have a some more resonant structures. But here this sigma complex is a more stable because here in this case uh, of course here remaining uh, five resonant structures are possible. So among the seven resonant structures two resonant structures have the aromatic ring benzene. But here in this case uh, of course here, here remaining uh, five resonant structures are possible but in this case uh, among the total seven resonant structure here only one resonant structure has a aromatic ring that is a benzene so here comparatively with this one this is a more stable sigma complex that's why in naphthalene first position the first carbon is the most preferable for attacking of the electrophile okay so let us discuss some reactions of the naphthalene okay so here in this case this naphthalene on chlorination will get the one chloro naphthalene okay and uh, two chloro naphthalene here one chloro naphthalene is a major product okay because this position is the most preferable for the alkylophile attacking so here in a benzene actually monochloro benzenes are the only one okay one monochloro benzene and in case of the naphthalene monochloro naphthalene is possible too those are the one chloro naphthalene two chloro naphthalene it is also called as the alpha chloro naphthalene it is also called as the beta chloro naphthalene okay that's it. Of course, on nitration, that uh, one nitron after in two nitron after in are, are possible, but here one nitron after in is a major product in nitration. Now, here uh, sulfonation. Here, sulfonation has uh, some importance because here SO3H is a bulky alkylophile. So, at 80 degrees centigrade, this product is formed that is nothing but kinetically controlled product. It is expanded on the, the, on the basis of the stability of the carbocation, that means sigma complex okay at 160 degrees centigrade it is a thermally controlled product that means here thermally more stable product it is a thermally unstable product okay but here kinetically more stable product now here in this case uh, at uh, at high temperature what will be happen uh, with this so3h actually here this so3h is a bulky profile at high temperature the vibrations of the bonds increases so here at uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 on the 8th carbon there is a hydrogen so with increasing temperature here 
for this hydrogen some bending vibrations increases so because of this bending vibrations here this hydrogen and SO3H repel each other so at a high temperature it becomes a very unstable that's why here that SO3H alkylophile attacks at the second position so here in this case there is a more space here between a hydrogen and SO3H of course here hydrogen hydrogen the very less repulsions at this temperature so that's why here the SO3 group majorly attacks on the second carbon at a high temperature okay that's it of course at 80 degrees centigrade this bending vibrations are uh, less extent that's why no much repulsions that's why here one sulfonic acid is a major product okay that's it so here in this case uh, alkylation reaction that methyl group enters at the first carbon next year acylation reaction okay so actually here where acylation also there is a one importance here one specificity here by using carbon disulfide here by using uh, nitrobenzene as a solvent okay and this acylation alkylophile is a ch3 c double bond o plus okay that means it is a ionic species now here carbon disulfide is a non-polar carbon disulfide is a non-polar so here um, this alkylophile is less surrounded by the uh, this carbon disulfide solvent okay because uh, it is a some ionic nature but carbon disulfide is a non-polar so there is no much uh, actually solvation effect on the this alkylophile that's why here uh, this solvated uh, alkylophile size is smaller okay this solvated size alkylophile is uh, smaller that's why this majorly attacks on the first carbon but here in case of the nitrobenzene this is a polar solvent actually this one has a slightly polar nature so here this ionic species that means nothing but alkylophile it is more solvated it is more solvated by the nitrobenzene that means here with increasing solvation effect here size of the solvated ion size of the solvated ion increases so here that becomes a very bulky so here that attacks at the less spherically less hindered position that is nothing but second position okay if this one attacks on the uh, at this alcohol first carbon here there is some repulsions with this hydrogen on the eighth carbon that's why here that coch 3 uh, solvated with the uh, nitrobenzene majorly attacks on the second carbon okay that's it that is a solvent effect actually here you can see now here next uh, oxidation of the naphthalene okay so here very interesting products so you can see here in this case this naphthalene on reaction with the acidified KMnO4 of course with benzene ring actually here uh, we cannot see the reaction okay so benzene on reaction with the acidified KMnO4 no reaction so but here in this case naphthalene is one benzene ring is oxidized to the tolic acid okay of course this one on further heating we get the tolic anhydride by loss of water molecule tolic anhydride we can get okay next year uh, by uh, using v2o5 uh, that means your oxidation with vanadium pentoxide here directly we can get the tolic anhydride because uh, v2o5 is a good dehydrating agent v2o5 is a good dehydrating agent that's why here as soon as naphthalene formation here dehydration also takes place but with the uh, acidified KMnO4 that first is converted into tolic acid on further heating will get the tolic anhydride by loss of water molecule okay next uh, oxidation with uh, chromic acid here we will get the very interesting product that is uh, naphthoquinone okay this is the naphthoquinone okay that's it next year ozonose is followed by reaction with zinc and water this double bond cut into that means carbonyl groups cut the double bond paste the oxygen so here this one is converted to CHO and this one converted to CHO and here CHO and CHO this group is a CHO this group is a CHO so here this is the glyoxal this is the ptololdehyde these are the two products in case of the ozonosis of the naphthalene and next year very interesting reaction this is uh, this uh, one nitro naphthalene on oxidation okay on oxidation here actually in oxidation the benzene ring which has a more alkaline density is readily oxidized the benzene ring which has a more alkaline density is readily oxidized this is the product in this case because 
This benzening is NO, uh, attached to the NO2. This NO2 is the electron withdrawing group. Decrease the electron density on this benzene ring. So here on this benzene ring, relatively this one has a more electron density. So this benzene ring is readily oxidizable. That's why here oxidation of this ring, cleavage of this ring uh, takes place with the acidified K-4. Now here on reaction with the iron HCl that uh, NO2 reduced to the NH2. Okay, NO2 reduced to the NH2. Now here this compound on oxidation. Here nitro compound on oxidation. Here aniline compound. That means here NH2 is a strong donating group. That increases the electron density on this ring. So this ring is readily oxidizable. So here the product is C double bond OH. Here double bond OH. Completely thoric acid is the product. Okay. So that you can see the difference in oxidation reaction of the compounds. Okay. So the compounds having more electron density are readily oxidizable. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching.